Well, what do you know? We are rolling right into summer. I feel like Simplicity and the Big Four are just like catching up from like leaving us hanging for so long. Um, so we have Butterick's Summer Collection now. We're going to take a look at this. If you've never seen one of my first impression videos before, we just kind of look through um, the entire sewing collection, sewing pattern collection together, and I assess it for fit and fabrication and kind of just like what my thoughts are about it overall in general. And you guys reply in the comments and let me know what you guys think. And we just have a good time chatting about patterns as if we were like sitting at your way and looking at the books together. So um, we're kicking things off with, we're going to skip all of these little kids clothes because I don't sew little kids clothes. And I, I don't know, it feels a little bit weird to me to like analyze fit on kids and so, I mean, and they're always cute, right? Like, <laughs> they're always just going to be stinking adorable. Look at this. Um, so, jumping right into the women's patterns, we have a Mrs. Jacket Vest with Belt Top Dress and Pant. Mrs. Jacket and Vest with Belt. Oh, Vest with Belt is one thing. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. This is one of their wardrobe patterns. I really, really love these um, because you can make a capsule wardrobe. You can make an entire season's worth of outfits in this one pattern. You buy a few different fabrics that coordinate with each other and bing, bang, boom, you're good to go. Um, this one has, or it includes, an online jacket or vest with a matching tie belt, side carriers, buttoned epaulettes, and side seam pockets. It also has a fitted knit top and dress that has a neck and armhole bands. And then fitted pants have waist facings, invisible zipper, and hook and eye with a tapered leg. So woven jacket, I'm sorry, yeah, jacket, vest, and pants, and then a knit top and dress. Yes. Okay. So taking a look at each of these little coordinates here or quadrants. This is the vest. Super cute. Interesting choice for summer. Um, this is feeling a little bit more spring or fall to me. I'm not wearing layers <laughs> in the summer. Um, but I guess maybe if you have like a cold, I don't even know, for a cold office. Um, but it is really cute outside of the seasonal confusion. Um, it has this really big lapel. These are the epaulettes it's talking about belt carriers, a nice big, they're calling it a belt, it's really a tie, um, side seam pockets. This is the little knit dress, okay, so Butterick is really known for, in my mind, it's like patterns for oh, kind of like the everyday woman, you know what I mean? Like you can go to work in this, but you can also like go to brunch or go run errands or like, you know, you can wear this in lots of different applications, dress up, dress down. So a uh, knit t-shirt dress, can't go wrong, um, super comfortable, easy to wear. This is the jacket version of the vest we just looked at in a print. Um, same design, just with sleeves, but it's also shorter, yes? Yes. Shorter, and then here's the tank top, so the same as the dress, just cropped. And then here's your pant. Now the pant have a flat front, there's not an elastic in sight. Um, really kind of Chico's, you know, the store Chico's, that's, that's kind of how I equate Butterick's brand, you know, um, she's a mom, she works, she has a life, she's social, you know, you can apply any of these, depending on your fabric choice would really be like the, the way to kind of make these garments stand out. I would love to see the pants with like the shirt tucked in or something. I don't think we're gonna get that. Oh, here's the back of the jacket. So it has this pleat also. I don't, I think it's center back seam and then it opens into a pleat. I wanna see the line drawings too because now this looks like this is all a pleat. Okay. The back of the pants look great. Back of the tank looks awesome too. Yeah, the dress fits wonderfully. There's no pooling here. That would be my biggest concern with kind of like a shift dress is that there's enough width in the hip 
um, that all of this just floats nicely over the body. Okay, here's the back of the envelope. We're gonna look at the bigger versions of the line drawings to see if there's anything we missed. But um, so suggested fabrics for the coat, vest, and pants. I love that they separated it out. We have cotton twill, linen, sateen, and silk. Yeah, maybe like not all silks, but like silk twill. Um, sateen, linen, yeah, for sure. Of course, for the well, bottom weights, really, you could even do your jacket and vest out of that. Um, suitings, maybe, even if they're a little bit less drapey, a little bit more structured. And then C and D are 35% stretch knits. I love that they put the percentage on there. I don't know if they're listening to me or not, but I just keep saying it until it happens. And then I point it out um, when it does happen to acknowledge like reinforce a positive behavior in the hopes that they will start doing it to all the brands. So if you're listening, we love this. Okay. Um, some suggestions are Jersey, Pontinet. Now, I don't think Pontinet is going to have a 35% cross grain stretch unless it's really lightweight. And then it might like barely, barely. Ribnet is much stretchier than Pontinet. So, you know, this, I think, is the most helpful thing, which is why I like seeing the percentage more than necessarily these things, because you can get an idea of, like, where you're supposed to be regarding stretch, and then if it's not as stretchy, you know to size up. If it's super stretchy, you know to size down. Um, and then notions-wise, you're going to need some buttons, an invisible zipper, and a hook and eye. So not a ton of expense there. This comes in sizes 8 to 26. I think it's broken in, into two right here. So it's 8 to 16 and then 18 to 26. Um, and then finished garment measurements are not included on the back of the envelope. So womp womp. But I think that when you have when they have to include so many different pattern pieces, pattern, like there's five patterns in one, so they have to Put a lot of info back here um so i guess okay fine but um but before you buy it i would for sure um i guess you have to do it in store you can only get you can only see the finished garment measurements in store which is kind of annoying especially if you're in between sizes oh gosh yeah i don't know i see i see the argument on both sides um okay let's look at the line drawings really quickly we have, okay, so here's the jacket. Okay, 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 I see now. Yeah, relatively simple jacket to sew, considering it makes such an impact, I think. Um, there's just this little facing here on the um, lapel. This is a facing also. So you gotta assume this kind of wraps around and then comes down on the inside of the jacket here. There's this little stitching thing, which is nice, and then that opens up into your pleat. I actually think I'd kind of love this with just a button right here and, like, forego the belt. You know, you don't always have to have a belt. There's the vest version that's long. And also consider, you know, cropping this and make it, this is two lengths, but you can make it any length you want. Um, yeah, I'm here for, like, a simple jacket vests are really in so i think you're going to see a lot of this in the fall um so go ahead and grab this now for sure okay here's the tank top and dress very simple okay you can sew this super super easily there's it's like not super finicky when it comes to applying the bindings especially because you have actual pattern pieces for this if you've ever done like an indie pattern where they're like, just measure it and figure it out. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. But it's not that straightforward, <laughs> okay? Um, so yeah, really, really straightforward. All of your like um, mid-weight jerseys would be super great out of this to get the structure that they used. Or like they suggested, the the lightweight Ponte. But just be careful because Ponte isn't really a summer fabric. It's kind of like not breathable. Um, so... So yeah, there's some options there. The lighter weight you go with your fabric, like I wouldn't go like bamboo jersey. Like that would just cling to your body. 
maybe, maybe for the tank top, but for the dress, I just feel like you need something that's going to stand away from your body just a little bit. And then the pants, we have these nice big darts in the front and back, side zipper, and then there's a facing on the inside. So your classic, like, straight leg, you know, pencil pant. Um, so, yeah, I love a wardrobe pattern. Okay, next we have a women's shirt and shorts. Okay, here for the women's patterns. Um, after doing Vogue that has none, um, and also was it, who was it? New Look doesn't have any either. Um, happy to see we're back to size inclusivity here. All right, so this is a shirt and shorts. Fitted shirts have collar, collar band, bust darts, long sleeves with pleat, button cuffs, button front closing, top stitch trim, and narrow hem. View A has long rolled sleeves. So the wrong side shows and button tabs. If you, I'm sorry, pleated shorts have side front pockets. Okay, fly front zipper, carriers and length variations. View C has turn back cuffs. So I think that means the wrong side shows too. And view D has a stitched hem. They're rating this easy, that's, mm, <laughs> um, the sizing is 20 to 28 and 30 to 38. So. It's not, this is my problem that I always say when it comes to women's patterns outside of like Nomi and maybe, maybe, maybe McCall's, like, mm, it's just not special. It's a little bit too basic. And I know that you plus size girlies are looking for something cool, unique. I mean, I don't know though. At the same time, like that last pattern we just looked at for Mrs., that's not that unique and interesting. So maybe I'm just like expecting too much from all the brands um, and that I need to respect each brand's kind of vision. In which case, if this is like the Chico's woman, right? Like this kind of tracks. So, okay, I retract my previous statement. Um, so what we have here though is a button down, like a button up shirt with a collar and a collar stand. That's what makes me think this is not an easy pattern. That's tricky to do. Um, plus the button placket, and then you have the sleeve with the cuff and the um, little vent. So interesting that they chose easy. Same thing for the shorts with the fly front. This isn't easy. That that must be an oversight um, because those all of that together is really difficult to um, achieve. Um, but God, the styling is just really something else. Um, yeah, the shirt is fine enough. Uh, I always, always, always point this out when it comes to plus size. The shoulder seams seem to always be too long. And I know that we've got to create some extra room here for the bust, but then that should be taken back in for the shoulder. Um, like, for example, her shoulder joint is, like, way up here. And, okay, fine. It's not supposed to sit at the top of her shoulder. So it comes down to here, maybe. You know what I mean? I just always feel like these are way, way, way too long. Um, I don't think that this sleeve head has, like, a very big, um, like, shoulder. What would be the word for it? Like, a, like, the top of the sleeve pattern, you know? It's like a bell shape. I think it's flatter then it is pointier, which means it shouldn't be all the way up on her shoulder, but this just feels really slouchy. And I don't know that that was the intent. Um, we're also getting, maybe because she has her hip pop, we're also getting some drag lines here, which would indicate that the bust isn't fitted well. But that again, that could just be her pose. So let's see what other pictures we get. The illustrations are just really hard to like, assess because I mean is that even like a shoulder seam I don't know it's just sort of like a guess this one seems to sit where the actual human models did but I don't know I don't really trust that oh then they tied it up why is the styling on the illustration like 99 times but 99% better than 
than this. Um, yeah, I just don't know if even like the everyday plus size woman is wearing knee length shorts. Are you guys? I don't, I mean, I have eyeballs. I'm out on the streets. Like I see what people wear. I'm not seeing, these aren't even like really Bermuda style. They're, they're kind of too baggy for Bermudas. Huh. Maybe it's the two things together. I don't know. This is just like throwing me off. And also this, this is a lot. That is a lot of extra fabric there. So I'm not sure like what their full size block, what size that's based on versus what size she is versus like, you know, I don't know if, I don't know, maybe it's just this one particular pattern. We'll keep an eye out, but we have A and B. So the, both of the tops, which are really the same top, just one you roll up the sleeve and the other one you don't. Um, chambray cotton shirting crepe, which I think is what they used on the hot pink one. Um, and then crinkle is supposed to say gauze. It says gauge, but it's supposed to say gauze. Um, and then for the shorts, gabardine, lightweight denim, linen blends, twill. Yeah, any of your bottom weights would be suitable for that. Buttons and buttons and zipper and hook and bar. So the sizing we went over, 20 to 28, 30 to 38. No finished garment measurements on this pattern envelope either. Which for this one's not a huge deal simply because the shirt isn't very fitted at all. Um, the shorts are at the waist, but yeah, not, yeah, not ideal, but not the end of the world. We also never saw like the full waistband of the shorts. She, they did that tie up thing, but it was still like covering most of it. You do have two front pleats here and one back dart. This appears to be a straight waistband which means it should sit at her natural waist. It does look like it is in the illustration. I can't tell if it is here or not. The tied up version. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it's up there. If that's the case, then I'm wondering, no, it looks fine. And when they show us the back of the shorts, they have the freaking shirt covering it up. So, I had, oh God, it makes me not want to trust <laughs> I have like, I don't know if it's like trauma surrounding like misleading model photos or what, but I don't know. This is starting to feel a little bit weird. I guess maybe just muslin this one. It would be my best advice. Or at the very least, tissue fit it. Okay, now we have, this is the same thing. Okay, okay, so we're doing... All of the women's versions are going to have a Mrs. counterpart and they're going to be separate pattern numbers. So the same way that McCall's is doing it. Um, so same exact description. They put the shorter shorts on this girl, on the actual model this time. Okay, now that I'm looking at her shoulder, it seems to be really long too. And this illustration is saying that I don't, it said what's throwing me off. I think is that it said fitted shirt. And so it shouldn't have a wide shoulder like that. If it's fitted, if it's fitted, it's fitted or call it fitted with a drop shoulder. That's kind of weird too, but like, what is it? This one also, because it's like dipping in right here makes me feel like it is too long for her. There is room in the sleeve cap for this to go up and over her shoulder. It's not doing that. So that's what's causing this little dip. Does that make sense? Other than that, she's not getting the same drag lines as the women's version. Um, so the bust, you know, is suitable for her. I mean, even 
So this is the illustration of the women's modeled version. And they just tucked it in, rolled up the sleeve. Like they know that this is cuter than what they were presenting on that model. Like why style it with the shirt untucked? I get like, okay, one picture of the shirt untucked to show us how long it is and whatever else. But then help us visualize this being cute. Because this isn't it. Oh, this one, they just took the shirt right off. Okay. So here is the back of the shorts. The crotch curve looks okay. It looks, it looks okay. Um, this is what's concerning me, the dip. Um, the dip means that there's not enough rise. There's not enough fabric to go up and over her bum and she doesn't even have a very big bum <laughs> so <laughs> pretty average standard bum here and we're still getting the dip so that's a little bit concerning um so all of this is the same and still no finished garment measurements all right um four to 12 i think and then 14 to 20 maybe i'll look at the main page here in a second um hmm yeah, 4 to 12. Oh, they cross this over. 4 to 12 and 12 to 20. In theory, this is really cute and cool. I do like the shorts. I just don't know. I just, I don't, I'm not very confident about the fit of this one. Of like the pattern drafting. So I would want to just double, triple check that before I cut into any of my fabric. Okay, now we have Mrs. Knit lounge top dress and pants. Lounge top dress and pants. Okay, button front top or dress have split neckline, front released pleats, shaped hem, and stitched hems. View A has short sleeves. View B armhole is finished with purchase bias tape. Okay, semi-fitted straight leg pants have elastic waist. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, so... Oh man. Okay. Um, okay. Because they're calling this lounge, I'm assessing it under the guise of it being like hang out at home. Right. Isn't that what lounge means? Um, this, it just feels like a lot to be lounging the buttons these pleats that, uh, or these darts that open up, this little stand collar, um, why, why, we can wear this out, yes? I'm not being inappropriate, am I? I don't think so. I think a knit dress with all these style details is perfectly suitable for the outside world. Um, yeah, the, I, I don't know. I'm being thrown by the, the, the fact they're calling it lounge. So I'm going to, like, remove that from my mind. And we're going to just assess this as if it were not lounge. I mean, lounge pants for sure because they're just elastic waist. They're knit, you know, whatever. But this top is, like, super nice. I mean, you put a little heel and some jewelry and a purse on her and she's ready to go. Okay, so this is a little bit illustrative, illust, illustrative, I you know I like to add syllables to words on accidents, on accident, so, illust, illust, is that it? Illustrative? That doesn't feel right. Of what I was trying to explain earlier, when there isn't enough room in the hip, you get this little bit of pooling. This is not a sway back. This does not require a sway back adjustment. This requires a either full butt adjustment or just grading out of the hips a little bit more, just a little bit more so that it glides nice and smoothly over the bum. Okay. Just because you're getting pooling does not always mean it's a sway back. Okay. I cannot reiterate that enough. I think the term sway back and the sway back adjustment is overused in home sewing. Um, more often than not, it's a 
circumference fit issue rather than a vertical fit issue. So you can always double check that against the waist markings on the pattern pieces and your bust, waist, and hip. You know how they have the horizontal markings? Check those against yourself first um, and then determine which adjustment to make. Okay, moderate stretch knits, 35% stretch cross grain, cotton interlock, French terry, and jersey. Yeah, all of those would be great. If you're going to be wearing this for the outside world, you know, you can go into even like double knits and um, like cotton jerseys and things like that. Five buttons, buttons, single fold bias tape. I did want to touch on that for a second. Bias tape finishing for this is fine. It will remove any stretch though. So you can buy stretch bias binding. You can make it out of this fabric. Um, but buying the packaged stuff that's like that woven really stiff stuff will maybe cause some issues in terms of like the stretch and how it like hugs your body. This looks good, but I don't know what they used. So just keep that in mind as well. Um, where's the back? Okay. So we have an elastic for the waistband of the pants. Um, 8 to 16, 18 to 26 on the size of range. Finished garment measurements. Okay, finally. So we do have, wow, two and a half inches of ease in the bust. Oh, this is a knit garment. Okay, so two and a half would be suitable even if it were woven for this type of fit. So I would consider maybe sizing down. Um, the waist is kind of negligible for the, for the, uh, top. And then they only give us the hip measurement for the pants, which that has four inches of ease in the hip. Again, that's kind of suitable for wovens too. Um, maybe two inches in the hip if it were knit. So a little bit oversized, I think, for a knit garment. But yeah, I don't see why this is, I mean, this kind of reads a little bit pajama, but this doesn't. Yeah, I wear, I don't understand that. I'd wear that everywhere. Maybe they just had like a category that they had to like check off and they were like, this one seems close enough. Okay, Mrs. Pants and Four Links by Palmer Plush. So Palmer Plush is the brand where you learn the tissue fitting, um, which honestly, intriguing to tissue fit with the tissue fitting method, with the tissue fitting experts, shorts and pants because that's where a lot of people have an issue. Um, this one has four lengths, waistband with optional belt carriers, fly front zipper closure, side seam pockets, and optional side slits. So from the like crotch line up, they're all the same. And then you have the ankle length with the slit, the above ankle length with the slit, Bermuda, and then mid thigh. Yeah. I mean, if you've tried some of the other, um, I love how this mimics this cute with the notch. Also, I love all that notching. Um, if you've tried the other pant spinning methods, top down center out, you've tried, you know, making a muslin, you've tried making your own like using your own measurements to make pants pattern. If you tried all of that and none of it works and you haven't tried the tissue fitting method, I mean, give it a go. It's definitely interesting. So what it is, is you figure out your size, you cut your size, try it on with the tissue. Like you pin up the side seams or the, all the seams with the tissue put that on and then on the pattern pieces themselves are the lines for where you would make the various adjustments. 
So I'm certain that they have a full belly adjustment on the front and a full seat adjustment on the back. They might even have like rise, crotch curve, and those kinds of adjustments. I haven't ever looked at one of them before, but they have all of those things drawn on the pattern pieces themselves. So it takes a little bit of the guesswork out. And then of course they explain to you how to do the adjustment too. So, I mean, I mean, obviously all of these things fit great. They look wonderful on this model. Um, you can see that they also, uh, they also lean toward a more, um, re I guess, relaxed fit. They, it's more of like a standard trouser, you know, where you're going to have room under the butt. It's not going to be super fitted, um, but it is going to fit well, which I think this one does. Maybe, maybe a little bit too much fabric in the inner thigh, if I'm being super, super picky. Um, but you can see like the waistband is relatively straight across. I, I'm pretty sure they're using a curved waistband here. Um, I'm pretty sure this is supposed to sit an inch below your natural waist. So that would make sense. Um, maybe a little bit funky with the, these should be maybe a little bit longer for her, but um, for the measurements that they were given for her or however it works, it, these fit pretty good. Here's another view where she's not like got her leg popped out. So again, maybe a little bit of extra fabric under here, which is what I was, this is either, I think this is pointing to the inner thigh, honestly. Like, I think there's just too much fabric there, which is such a specific fitting thing that if they didn't have this chick in their studio with them to fit it, I mean, She's just like any other fit model. Again, this is drooping just a little bit, but for a curved waistband, kind of makes sense. Yeah, same issue, pointing to the inner thigh, but now the waistband is straight across, so I don't know. And then you do have the little slits on the, on the shorts too. It's really nice to see so many butts <laughs> on one model. These, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, don't these seem a lot longer too? So. So yeah, worth a try if you're looking for, you know, an, an adventure um, in terms of pants and shorts fitting. Now this seems totally straight. I don't know um, where it's supposed to hit, but just keep all the normal things that I say about pants fitting in mind whenever you're doing this. Um, so all of your bottom weights are going to be suitable for this. Yep, all of those make perfect sense. 8 to 16, and then I think the 16 doubles, so it goes 16 to 24, or I think is probably how they're doing it. We have, oh god, no bust. We have 24, 3 inches of ease in the waist. See how I mean, what I mean about it kind of being a little bit on the roomy side? Um, and then the hip has uh, four inches, no, five inches. So yeah, very generous in terms of the fit, very relaxed fit. You can certainly take those things in once you, cause really like you're fitting, you're really fitting the crotch, right? The crotch curve, depth, length. That's what you're really working on here. Width does matter, especially the hip to waist grade of it all but that's really it so once you get that figured out then you can you can taper it in you can take it in on the sides you can you know futz around with it a little bit i haven't seen them do a pant or a short palmer plush in a minute all right so now we have a mrs top with short or long sleeves this is kind of cool. Loose fitting, button front top has princess seams, dolman sleeves, neck band, and shaped hem. UA has above link, above elbow length sleeves with sleeve band. UB has long sleeves, ending in button cuffs with continuous lap opening. Again, calling it easy. I don't know. Yeah, this is fun. I certainly wouldn't style it this way, but I do love a play on stripes. I'm always going to be a fan of that. 
This one has the little um, like mandarin collar. It's not even really like, it's not a stand collar. It lays flat against your body. Um, a little bit difficult to sew that, especially right here is the trickiest part. But you have these facings with the button plackets. Seaming here. Is there a pocket there? That would be, oh no, there's a pocket here. I want the pocket to be here. That would be cool. And then you can either do these cuff sleeves, which I love, or you can do the long ones. I love that it's a dolman sleeve. I love that. I mean, it is long enough to tuck in. It is like a tunic. I would, I don't wear things that long, but, um, you know, adjusting for length is not super difficult. I actually think extending it a foot and making it into like a dress would also be really cute. Yeah, she's loving it. Yeah, I love the play on stripes. This is probably some kind of like silk. Really pretty. I want to make sure that these gathers are intentional, that they're supposed to be there. Um, Batiste, very lightweight woven, usually cotton, chambray, gauze, linen, rayon, chalet, any of your silky types, any kind of polyester, and then all you need is buttons. Well, and interfacing. Um, 8 to 16 and then 18 to 26. And this is a very roomy garment. So, oh, and your bust, waist, and hip are all, it's like a square. This whole thing is a square. So that goes from 43 and a half up to 60 finished. Um, so they have 12 inches of ease in the... In the bust, which also equates to 10 inches in the hip. Yeah, very, very oversized. Um, yeah, it, I guess it depends on your fabric. Like if you're using chambray that's not very drapey, I'm not going to want 12 inches in the bust. But if I'm using rayon chalet, that's really drapey and falls in on your body, that would be fine. Um, so it really depends on fabrication. You could size down. I mean, you could do as little as six inches in the hip and still get that kind of oversized look that's comfortable when you sit down, yada, yada, yada. Um, so yeah, if, if I would so base your sizing off of the largest part of you. So if that is your bust, use the bust. If it's your hip, like me, I'm a pair, I'm going to use my hip. But I do like this, and it is inspiring. I do like it. I do like it a lot. And yes, the gathers are intentional. I think it would just be really fun to sew. I also feel like when they did it this way, even in the illustration, um, having these run horizontal... Maybe there was a missed opportunity with this bottom panel. Like, they did this vertically, which, and I think that that's how it's done on your cutting layouts too. But this could have been something else. Or if you want to consider like three colors of like Seersucker, that would be fun. I do feel like this bottom panel, do you see here how it's separate? There, there's something to be done with this too to add a little even more interest and maybe even with the collar piece too that's separate I do like it I do like it a lot I like the short sleeve version um okay so next we have ooh a Mrs. dress Halter style dress. I've been saying halter, 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 halter. All spring, all summer collections have featured at least one halter top. I've been seeing it a lot in ready to wear. Um, yeah, it's definitely back. Um, okay, halter style dress has lining, fully interfaced bodice with boning. 
Princess seams, invisible back zipper, side seam pockets, and button closure on back of neck. View A has slim skirt. View B has flared skirt with flounce. If you saw this description on the Vogue website, you wouldn't think twice about it. This is very, very couture finished for a buttering pattern. 8 to 16 and 18 to 26. The idea that this has the boning here, which is going to keep you from tugging on this. I mean, yes, this keeps it up, but even still, this can droop down sometimes. You know what I mean? I still still see people tugging on this. So, yeah, a very familiar design to me, an elder millennial. Um, this might be a little long. Like, maybe around here is her waist. But you have the circle skirt with a flounce. I absolutely love a flounce skirt. Or you have the pencil skirt with the side seam pockets on both. And then this is your detail on the back. We're going to zip it up to here. And then this gets button closure. I kind of wish that were hook and bar, but easy enough to trade that out. Yeah, it's a really pretty summer event dress for sure. Yeah, the line drawings are super cute. Hmm. Okay, fabric recommendations are chambray, cotton sateen, gingham, linen blends, seersucker. So yeah, they're giving you all of the summertime, like, mid-weight woven situation. But, like, this version here, you could also do out of Ponte. You could also do out of, um, well, they do suggest sateen, actually. So... Sateen would be great for something like this, especially if it's a little bit of stretch. Um, any stretch woven would be nice for this version. Um, this one you could also take into like the holidays and do like brocade or something like that. So um, try and think of this not just as a summer dress. And you might find yourself liking it more than because for I guess for me... This is a little bit fancy for summer, right? Like I'm not going to weddings. I'm not going to garden parties. That's just not my lifestyle. But it is not too dressy for some of the winter events I would possibly attend. Um, so that's why I kind of try and think of it outside the seasons, especially when it comes to fabrication. All right, so an invisible zipper, your boning, and then two buttons. If you've never done boning before, it is so simple. You're really just kind of making a casing and you're sliding this like plastic stuff up into it and that's it. You just so it's really really not intimidating at all or it shouldn't be. Um finished. Okay, so the ease on this it's close fitting, right? I mean maybe not the hip for this, but everywhere else it should be like one or two inches of of ease. Um, and it looks like for the bust, we have three and a half inches of ease. No, no, that's too much. And then the waist, we have two. Okay, that makes sense. And then the hip of the close fitting skirt, A, we have three and a half. Okay, that makes sense. I think the bust is just a little bit um, too much ease. And I'm also kind of shocked they don't have separate bust cups for this one. But easy enough to adjust the princess seam. It's it's easier to adjust that than it is a darted bodice um, for fuller busts. It does look really well drafted in terms of like how high this is coming up under here, what it looks like under her arm. Like I am, I do feel good about suggesting this pattern for sure. Yeah, it's really, really cute. I'm trying to think, maybe, like, I think this part here is what's throwing me for summer because that feels very, like, like it would be really hot. Even in the nighttime. Maybe that's the only reason why I'm thinking this doesn't feel like summer to me. But... That's my, really my only critique is the seasonality of it. And that's not even really a critique. That's just an opinion. Okay. 
now we have, okay, a women's knit dress by Palmer Plush and the Mrs. version two. So this might be the first Palmer Plush women's pattern I've ever seen. If not, definitely one of the few that have ever existed. Knit dresses in three lengths have V-neck and wide waistband with gathers on bodice and skirt. View A is sleeveless. B and C have three quarter sleeves. Okay. Okay. Wow. An interesting little neckline here, right? Like it's almost kind of like a cowl, but not. Comes into this little like pointed thing here. You do have this waistband that hits under bust. You can see it really well here with gathers for the bust and then gathers underneath with a little uh, pocket as well. Again, the shoulder seam seems really long, but look how pretty it is on the sleeveless version. So they either rigged this or shockingly, there's two separate bodice pieces, which I do not think that that is the case. But maybe it is Palmer Plush after all. So maybe there are separates. The maxi's super pretty. Yeah, this is really interesting. I'd be curious to see kind of how the construction of that. I also want to see the back. I get that this is being pulled down because she's got her hand in the pocket. This one looks fine. You just want to make sure this is, you know, straight across. This blue is stunning on her, yeah? She kind of does look a little bit like a realtor or like a news anchor. You know, it's very news anchor blue. But still really pretty. This ITY, whatever they're using, that drape is just like, oh my god, so good. And the print. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd call that a three-quarter length sleeve, more of a seven-eighths. But that could, again, be because it's just being, you know, it's so far down her shoulder. Yeah, the maxi is so pretty. Here's the back. So it is a little bit droopy in the back, okay? Maybe consider shortening the center back. Also, let me adjust my screen. What is this? I mm, That's not a zipper. No, it's just a little seam. Okay. Um, and on this one, yeah, I just want this to be a little bit higher, but that's just me being extra picky. Right? I don't want it to do that. Because on the line drawings, yeah, it's straight across. Okay, cool design though. I don't know how much like the fitting of it all is going to matter on this one. I'm sure you'll fit, you'll learn some things, especially like full bust adjustments. Um, maybe even like bicep adjustments. But it is a knit, so it is a little forgiving. It So, you know, I don't know that I would buy this one for the tissue fitting method necessarily. But they are recommending stretch knit, such as cotton lycra, cotton knit, and jersey. I mean, I really think you could use any light to midweight knit on this. They're not showing the stretch percentage, but I think you could absolutely do um, ITY. You could do the bamboo rayons. They would be really lightweight and really drapey, um, which is, you know, I don't do that over my butt because that's just a little bit too clingy for me, but there is a lot of volume in this skirt. Um, so maybe it wouldn't matter as much, but yeah, you could definitely do a lot of the I definitely don't err on the side of drapey, not necessarily lightweight, but drapey for sure. 
Okay, so finished garment measurements and in terms of the body measurements, the ease is five inches in the bust. That's a lot for a knit garment. The waist is three, in, no, I'm sorry, five inches. That's also a lot for a knit garment. Huh. I'm just not sure. That doesn't look like five inches of ease to me. Interesting. I don't know about that. Five inches of ease. That feels like a lot. But the neckline is super cool. Yeah, pretty. Pretty. Just, just double check that the sizing of it. Maybe size down. All right. Now we have the Mrs. Version. Same thing. I just want to see if the, if the, um, we'll look at the pictures, but I want to see if the, um, what am I saying? The ease is the same. And the shoulder too. The shoulder does look the same. The sleeve length looks the same. But the sleeveless version is cut back some. So that's pretty. This is a cotton jersey, I think. So you, can you see the difference between the sort of structured quality of this versus the slinky drapey quality of this, which I think is ITY? Can you see the difference in that? Yeah, hers is kind of drooping down too. So yeah, I think just a little long through here. But man, that cut of that shoulder is so pretty. Yeah, all I want to do is pull this up. And I think that that would remove a lot of this too, if all of this was going up and over. Still not seeing five inches of ease anywhere though, so... Let's see. So they're showing four and a half on the bust. Same for the waist. And then the hip is negligible. So one inch less ease. Which still feels like a lot for a knit garment. If you wanted for reference, you know, people here, you wanted to make this out of a woven, you could do that. You would just need to add a zipper. So you would add either on the side seam, add a zipper to get in, or cut up the center back, add your seam allowances, and put a zipper in there. I think you could make it out of a woven in your size, no problem. But for the knit, you'd want to size down, which is just really frustrating. Maybe Butterick's block and, and or their their just in general their ease recommendations are just more than usual for whatever reason okay this is a retro 1950s butterick play suit midriff blouse shorts and skirt and I feel like of all the pattern companies that do the um, vintage reproductions, Butterick's is always the most like authentic to the time. You know what I mean? It's always like what you see on, like Mrs. Maisel would wear this in a heartbeat, you know? Um, so four piece sports wardrobe sewing pattern, carefree separates for Summer fun in plaids or provincial prints with trim. View A, cropped all-in-one, button front, scooped neckline. Play suit, I think. Oh, wait. See, this is where it gets confusing. Okay, so it is. Okay, view A is a play suit. View B is a bare midriff top. View C is 
tailored shorts. So is view A a top? I, I don't know. I'm confused now. And then view D is a button front skirt. Let's look at this. So A is the play suit. What is up with this? <laughs> what is that? B. Why do we only have line art for the backs? Okay. Okay. And then you get the top, the shorts, and the skirt separate. And I'm pretty sure this goes over this as well. That's what it looks like she's doing. This girl here. Oh no, that's the shorts. That's her body skin tone. Wow. This one's just like, I'll just carry my skirt around with me. <laughs> oh, that's all we get. Okay. In terms of photos. And we still don't have the front line drawings. Huh. Okay. Cotton broadcloth. Poplin, prints, denim, gingham, linen, PK, sailcloth. Yeah. All of your like structured midweight wovens. Lightweight interfacing. And then interfacing, rick rack, six buttons, interfacing, three buttons elastic interfacing and nine buttons the elastic is for B okay okay um yeah one inch of positive ease in the waist the hip for C and D the, no the hip for A and C yes that's what I want to see has four inches of ease. Yeah. I want to see this on a human being. Uh, I wish that they just did one little version just to show us. And I guess they think that this is good enough for a front line drawing. All I'm really seeing is a dedicated waistband, maybe a bust dart here, um, darts on the waist. This is pleated, I think, the skirt. I don't know. It's really hard to see what's going on. But could be really, really cute. Definitely check that inseam. She looks really short. <laughs> okay, we have another vintage pattern. Yeah. A halter dress and jacket, again from the 50s. Open back halter dress has buttoned empire midriff with two-piece bodice that gathers into pleats at neck, back, and very full skirt. Bolero jacket, which are also having a moment right now for what it's worth, um, is dart fitted with two-button closure at front and all-in-one sleeve. Okay. So yeah, your classic halter top, right? An empire underbust seam creates this like very wide midriff waistband into this absolutely <laughs> insanely voluminous skirt. And then you can throw this little cutie over top of it if you want to cover your shoulders and your upper back. Okay, I guess it's just they don't give line drawings for the front if the pattern cover is illustrated. I don't know. But similar fabrics for this as the last vintage pattern. They really only had so much to choose from back then. Chambray, cotton broadcloth, crepe, fail, linen, pique, shantung, taffeta. Yeah, if you want to go into like something a little bit fancier. Um... Woven or non-woven interfacing. A zipper. Eight yards of seam binding. What are we seam binding? Three buttons. And shoulder pads. Wow. Okay, the dress has half an inch of ease in the bust. The waist has 
one and a half inches. So why is the sizing and all of this so much better on this pattern than the modern day ones? Interesting. Okay. I mean, I think that one's a little harder to modernize. Um, maybe if like you removed, I don't know, at least 50% of the volume in the skirt. All right, now we have, are these new? Is this new? I feel like we, did we just look at these? I know I can't remember. Yeah, this is the spring collection, yes? Oh, it all says new, 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 down here, new, new, new. No, I definitely remember this. So I think that the end of the summer collection is here. I definitely remember this one from the spring video I did a couple weeks ago, right? You guys remember that too? Yeah, a thousand percent. I remember this one. Okay, so that's it. So it's just what we've covered already. Honestly, like a strong collection from Butterick. Uh, definitely seeing sizing issues throughout. So just get to know your Butterick size and forget what it says about anything else. Um, and you should be good. Definitely not like the most trendiest collection, but I don't think Butterick is trying to be that, you know? Um, yeah, some really good patterns in here. I am interested to see what you guys think Leave your comments in the comment section below. Otherwise, as they keep rolling out the summer collection, you know, I'll be back to review them. But that's going to do it for me today, y'all. I'll see you all very soon. Bye.